in. It's in-game live prime time. Hour number one of our two-hour extravaganza. Scott Wetzel, Dave Share Pam for the next 120 minutes. Two hours of glorious sports betting right here on the grid. Ah, yes. Little NBA, and I mean little. A uh, little NHL, and I mean real little. Then a decent amount, I suppose, compared to the others. Uh, college basketball will review the previous uh, NFL games and then preview the upcoming Super Bowl as well, no doubt as uh, the sports world still buzzing over the genius known as Dan Campbell. Ah, what's going on, Mr. Sheriff Penn? How are you tonight, my friend? Oh, good. Great to see you. Um, I didn't know that size was a requirement today. You're talking little and then very <laughs> little and all this other stuff. Terrific Tuesday. Um, yes, the Super Bowl is set. Um, it's starting to happen. I was down on the Strip today. We were down at Resorts World. We're talking to them about doing some stuff with BVB. And they turned the Luxor into a Dorito. It's a big chip. The the signage is all over the place. The Sphere is putting on helmets and all kinds of things. I'll be tweeting it as Sports BK can sing all week, all next week. Um, I can't believe we got a home game in Vegas the, for – for being where we're at, where we were, where we couldn't put the word Super Bowl on yeah. any of our sports book stuff ever. We were told if your sheets have the Super Bowl words on it or logo, it's a five hundred thousand dollar fine. And if we come back and you do it again, it's a million dollar fine. We called it the big game for years, VIP parties, private jets. Big high rollers, everybody. Now they can all come, which they've been doing for years. Nobody does uh, the Super Bowl better than Vegas, maybe as good. But now they can walk across the bridge and go right to the game. And the game is here. So already talking about props. Do you have a prop yet that you've come up with for the Black Cloud or anything like that? Have you even thought about this stuff yet, Wetzel? Because I know you're going to have some sort of something. Yeah, I will, but no, I haven't. I, I did okay. glance uh, on FanDuel today for the first time, and I noticed a lot of props are there already. Believe it or not, used to be you had to wait until the second week, right? Used to be you had to wait like two, three days before the game. Then it would be, yep. you know, start, okay, what well, second week we'll do it. Now it's basically, you know, five minutes after the championship games are done. Uh, heck, we got odds for the Super Bowl for next year, let alone, you know, games uh, you know still going on. So, But I haven't looked just yet, no. Were you surprised at all? See, like you're talking about the business changing. We never put up the Super Bowl line until Sunday night after the second championship game was played. We put the line up, take the initial bets, and then boom, we'd have a market. All of the matchups had look-ahead numbers. And the look-ahead right. number for San Francisco and Kansas City was actually San Francisco minus three. Were you surprised on Sunday when it came out, San Francisco two, two and a half, the initial money came on the Chiefs. Did anything surprise you about the side or the total for the Super Bowl? Not yet. Um, I, I, I do find it surprising that San Fran is favored, right? I mean, nothing for nothing after watching the championship games. But how can anybody put American money on Brock Purdy <laughs> when you're going up against Patrick Mahomes? I, I mean, it, it really wow. it just boils down to that for me. You really? know, can the Brock Purdy beat Jared Goff? Sure. Can Brock Purdy beat the uh, Love in Green Bay? Sure. You're telling me with a straight face, you're putting American money on a second year. You know, just a, a great story, right? It's a great story, but you're you're putting American money on Brock Purdy uh, against the quarterback that's going to go down, if not the greatest quarterback of all time, then yeah. the second best quarterback of all time. I, I, I mean, it's wow. a no-brainer pick to me. You got to take Kansas City. You just have to, in my book. This is one of those situations where we're going to hear about this all week and all of next week. Yep. And I mean, I was just down there today at Resorts World. Somebody bet fifty thousand. Well, we were there on San Francisco. The line went really? from two, two and a half down to one. They're flying down. They're driving in. They're going around. My buddy's out at South Point. Jimmy Vaccaro. Um, God bless him. He's in his late seventies and he's still grinding and working. Posted a picture today of a ticket for a hundred thousand on San Francisco. 50,000 more on the money line. The guy laid one. 
my guys at Circa. Yesterday, we had Jeff Benson on the show. One of the risk guys runs the whole joint at Circa. They moved it. They had San Francisco three. They took Kansas City. Kansas City got down to one. Their limit yesterday was 100000 He got the bet on the, on the Niners. So the big money so far, now they ain't been right all the time. They're all on the Niners, and the people are all on the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. As it was with Baltimore, right? And how that Same. turned out. As it was with, with Buffalo, right? The whole world Same. won the Buffalo Bills. That was going to be the one team. You know what? You, you said it, Dave. You know, sometimes the public is right. Sometimes the wise guys are wrong. There's enough yep. examples of that. And again, and again, I could look myself in the mirror if I lose taking Kansas City and say, all right, you know what? I had the greatest quarterback of all time. Certainly the best quarterback in our, yep. you know, playing right now. And if I lose, I lose. I take Brock Purdy. I'm like, well, am I, and I lose. What am I nuts? Well, I, I, yeah, it's a good story, but you know the the Lions had given up on average 375 yards the last five games on average. He couldn't even throw for 275, which I'm not yeah. happy about because I lost my major play on, on the one bet that I really like. Thank you very much, Brock Purdy. So a little oh. little bitterness there, I'll admit. I, but I hear I, it. I, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hear you want to bitterness. give me points though? I mean, he couldn't. He couldn't. He had to scramble. He had to scramble that last first down. He couldn't throw the ball. Couldn't find anybody open downfield. Made really? Right You're gonna scramble for the first time made in your right career. Play. Got down. Yeah, slid, right play, made, made the right play. Just saying, yeah. he did make the right play. Do you remember ten years ago, <laughs> Super Bowl was Ravens Niners the night the lights went out? Okay, right. I thought of that. I said, this is going to be crazy on Sunday. It's going to be Ravens Niners in 10 years ago. Do you remember where you were, where you watched that game? Do you remember anything about that game other than the lights going out? Um, I mean, I know. I don't remember you know, so where I, I was. No. Foggy. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's COVID. I mean, as you get COVID's older, killed me. That's, yeah, yeah it's, I, I get it. The Ravens won the game. The Niners closed as four-point favorites. The AFC right. won 34 to 31. Okay. Fast forward 10 years. Five years ago, or yeah, four, well, four, 2020, the Niners played the Chiefs. The Niners were two point favorites against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Flip back and forth, depending East Coast, West Coast. You remember who won that game? Niners and the Chiefs. Kansas City, obviously. Mahomes with the, uh, the scramble to lose his uh, rushing yards. Remember That's that? right. That was a gigantic swing in the book. Yeah. That was a gigantic. You should have heard the eruption in the risk room. They were very excited. They've made this mistake before making the Niners the favorite. And the AFC team is right. one. And it's say, you know, you're not wrong. It could happen. Yeah. They're favorites for next year. Without seeing the outcome of this year, next year, our fan Amazing. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Player. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to 1. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? He won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached, I think, with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls. 
uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right. Unfinished business. Go back. Try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast. Only on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. It, it was tight. We still have to win these games. Like, you can talk about even the equate it to the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit going, like, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory and not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game live, prime time. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sherapan. Until 10 p.m. Eastern time as we uh, break down a little NBA, a little college basketball, a little NHL, just to uh, talk a little preview with the with the Super Bowl. So uh, let me ask you, you asked me, Dave, uh, before we get to the games, uh, I, I do think Kansas City is the play. They're a one-and-a-half-point dog. I do think it's going to end up being pick them, but maybe not. We'll see by, by game time. But uh, regardless, you know, in essence, you got to pick the winner more than likely. So are you on Kansas City side at this point or, or San Fran's? I have no idea yet. I really don't know. I sit back and I go back and forth. And, you know, I'll probably let the kids decide for me. Like, it's one more game. I've already moved on to NHL stuff. I'm already talking about <laughs> college basketball and trying to do futures. This was the week for me where um, a couple other content people and stuff are actually putting this out there, um, and books are too. Come up with a prop, and we might use it at a book. And I go, oh, this is perfect. I used to do this for real, for a job. <laughs> so I'm trying to get a couple of the games that are being played on Super Bowl Sunday and do the cross sport props. I love the cross sport props. I did one one year with like team total rebounds against the tight end in the game, reception yards, and every sharp guy in the world that we had betting in our place thought my number was wrong and they kept betting and betting and betting and betting. And we made a ton of money that day because the rebound prop was right. So the, the basketball team won, it was OKC uh, Thunder, it was awesome. So maybe like uh, I, I remember doing Ovechkin shots on goal versus um, someone else uh, receptions it was a short number two and a half versus two and a half or something. So get to work on look who plays on Super Bowl Sunday NHL wise. Come up with a couple shots on goal props. I'll talk to my my uh, odds maker buddies and see if we can get a Wetzel Black Cloud. Super right. Bowl prop to put out there for the people because you know I mean it's, the game is the game. Sure. Like I I, I I I I might make depending on where I'm at and who I'm with, I might make fifty bets on the game in game because they used to do that and take all those bets and that was I'd much rather do that than make a pregame bet on it. Really. Let me ask you. Uh, I hate when people say that. Just ask. But let me ask you. Yeah. How come? Like you said it, right? Without even me asking you about it, the most one of the more popular prop bets now are these cross bets, right? You, you pick, uh, you know, shots on goal by a player versus how many touchdown passes a guy's going to have, or, or something like yeah. that. They love that, so people love that, right? Yet they more and more each year 
we're getting less and less games yep. being played. Yep. Only two NBA games. You know, Boston, Miami at 2 o'clock. All right, I guess that's halfway decent, right? But Sacramento, OKC, as it turns out, it's a pretty good game. But they didn't didn't know that three months ago, four months, five months ago when they put the schedule together. The hockey, there's only two hockey games as well. I think there's only one significant college basketball game. And even that one, I forget which one it is, isn't good. So did the NFL go to these other leagues and say, listen, you know what? Our pregame shows pay a lot of money. We don't want any competition. Is that the uh, that's what I'm conspiracy in me is saying that's what's happened because we're we're not getting anything from these other leagues. And this this is the perfect day to to promote your sport, right? You got all these house parties, all these people waiting around for the Super Bowl. Why not more NBA NHL? I don't know. I loved it. I th- would back in the day when we were young, there was other stuff going on. The the football game right. was the big game, the close to a very important, fun, sporting event day. And then I got in this business and, like, you know, we got some horse racing in the morning and, you know, out in Vegas. It's just on a different time schedule. The game kicks at 3.30. So, you know, we used to open a book at 6 a.m., try to get bets on the football to go with the basketball and the hockey. It generated great handle for those other sports. It was awesome. It was I, It was just – and it was a lot of fun. And I think you're right. Something's going on. Maybe they're just stepping back and going, give the NFL that day. Um, We'll just focus on a couple big games. But listen, the most bet prop, one of the most bet props, one is the MVP. Everybody loves the MVP market, the whole thing. You know, meanwhile, it's probably one guy on the Chiefs and maybe three or four on the Niners tops that can win it. They'll list all the, 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 there'll be 100 players listed. Yeah. The other one, what's up? The coin toss. Heads really? And tails. Still. Oh. Still. People love the coin wow. toss. It's instantaneous. It's quick. It's heads or tails. Everybody knows. Everybody can have an opinion on that. Your wife, your grandma, your aunt, Susie, Mary, everybody, you know, can have an opinion on that and put a dollar to shekels whatever you want the biggest bet i ever took on a on a coin toss was fifty thousand dollars somebody came in and wanted the fifty thousand wow. dollars <laughs> yeah on the and coin, the coin toss. toss this is the super bowl that's what happens word of caution right you know they have now it's so specific they have the coin toss and they also have who gets the ball first Oh. You know, I can see a lot of people thinking, oh, I won the coin toss. You know, you say Kansas City. Kansas City wins the coin. All right, I won my bet. I won my bet. And then Kansas City defers. <laughs> you know, and it's San Francisco that actually gets the ball first, even though they didn't win the coin toss. One of the worst things and best things for the business was all these derivatives spin off other derivatives. And you get situations like that where – Someone has been at the VIP party at the book all morning. They go watch the game in the VIP area the whole time. They did what you just said. They thought they won. They come up and you go, no, Kansas City deferred. The bet is San Francisco got the ball first. But they won the toss. Yes, they did. Trying to explain post-game was one of the, like, when you got older and a little more experienced, your shift ended at kickoff. So you didn't have to stay around and explain those. But when I first got to Vegas and I worked the close, opened the close, 14-hour day or something, I will never forget that first Super Bowl where we had to explain that stuff. It was uh, – that's not fun. I'm, thanks for bringing that one up. There's a lot of memories we'll talk yeah. about this week um, because we're not doing a show next week. We'll talk about it this week. Super Bowl memories, I'll throw some at you because I'm sure that you have did, did you have one Super Bowl in your mind that really was like your best everything you forecast went just perfect and everything won and or you hit a block pull or was there any one in particular for you that is is right there Yeah we used to give out locks when I was working over at the uh, well uh, the Mad Dog Sports Radio I'll say Okay um and and we hit them like every single year every single year the, the last one was, was Tom Brady uh attempts and and we looked it up I forget which Super Bowl it was. It was the last one, I mean, not the Tampa Bay one before Ta- that. Oh, okay, New um, England one. Okay. Yeah, New England, New England. One. 
And we, we looked it up, you know, games that he, you know, needed to perform, playoff games, his numbers were like five to seven more passing attempts than his regular season. And they were basing everything on the regular season. But we know, you know, as we were saying at the time, you know, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady are not hand the ball off at a Super Bowl. You know, the guy's going to throw like 30, 40 times. So whatever that last one was, um, not mm. Seattle. They, they beat somebody else. Not, not, it wasn't even, uh, oh, the Atlanta one I think it was. Um, that was like when the they perfect came back? storm. Not Philadelphia that they lost. Yeah, the okay. one they came back. We hit all our okay. props, our, our touchdown passes. Yeah, yeah. You know what we got to okay. do this week? I have a list of questions. You, you got to get one of your buddies. I, I, I love yep. doing this every year, Dave. Okay. A list of questions, prop questions, that the casual fan, you know, that we all love these props, might not know the answer to. And I don't even know the answer to a lot of them as well, but maybe we can get an expert on. I know the, the general question is going to be, well, it all depends on the book, but something like um, how many punts are going to be in a game, right? And over-under is around eight and a half, nine and a half. But what happens mm-hmm. if a punt is blocked? Does that count as a punt? Counts. Like like yeah. questions like that. Maybe you Most know. You know I'll, I'll, I'll send yeah. you the list. But yeah. I'd love to be able to like get answers to that so people know – no, wait, there were nine punts. Yeah, but one was blocked, so that doesn't count. So, um, that's yeah. a lot of fun. Well, we'll, we'll I can tell you this from my experience is talk scores. Yeah, talk more about definitely. It. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Ken. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to one. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? He won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached, I think, with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right, unfinished business, go back, try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. And it was tight. You still have to win these games. Like, you talk about evenly played it to the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit. Going, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory. And not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. All right, 
welcome back in game live prime time here on a, a terrific Tuesday. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sharepan, just talking a little NFL. And we'll, we'll touch on it every single day this week with so many things. But obviously, there are some games going on, although relatively light night. But uh, NBA day, we'll, we'll start there, I suppose. Uh, that's got a, a little bit more than the NHL, which only has two games, only one just getting underway. Uh, start at the top. You know, the one sucker line of the night. Let me ask you about this. And, and so far, it's turning out okay. Uh, Knicks lead Utah 43-36 in the second mm-hmm. quarter, laying six and a half. What were the New York Knicks, the red-hot Knicks, right? They've won seven straight. Utah, yep. you know, playing 500 on the season, but got off away, eight and 17 on the road. Why were the Knicks only a four and a half point favorite tonight at home? Scott, the game closed three. I thought half three. the team I was saw sitting. it was going lower. Yeah. The it's game like... closed three. I have no idea. Um, on my other podcast that I do, it's called Cash Considerations. I got a kid who's a partial season ticket holder uh, for the Knicks. His name's Tony Yanitsi. He's been talking about Brunson, and he's been talking about the Knicks on the show and getting in my ear. And I've asked him, and I've asked the other co-host of the show. His name is Dan Alexander. I've asked Parole on Boston University the book. I'm going to ask you, are the Knicks a good basketball team? Like, I don't want to say right away, like, I'm ready to advance them to the Eastern Conference Finals, like some delusional Nick fans that I know, my buddy, who's the co-host on the show with me. But, like, <laughs> they are good. Yes or no? Yeah. You know, I think they're 13 and 2 since the Anobi trade. I mean, he, he's a nice since player. Yeah, I mean, is he really making that big a difference, or is that a coincidence? Is it addition by subtraction with with Barrett? Um, I, I, you know, but yeah, right. I mean, listen, Milwaukee's going to be there in the end. Can they really? You know, when you stop to think about it, you know, are they going to beat the Bucks in a best of seven? You know, maybe once, maybe twice. Are they going to beat the Celtics in a best of seven again? Maybe once, maybe twice. I do think they could beat Philadelphia. Uh, you know, it all you know lies on uh, Julius Randle. You know, is, is he going to be a dog as he's been in the postseason, his career with the Knicks, or is he finally going to start playing good? But I tell you, Brunson, I, I didn't think he was this really good when he was with Dallas. You know, nice player and everything. Uh, uh, really, they didn't get the guy they wanted in, in uh, Donovan Mitchell, right? This was kind of like a secondary thing. But as it's turned out, his father's in the Knicks front office and everything. He's been phenomenal. Um, you it's need a guy, honest. right? I mean, we were – I know the guy won the MVP, but did anyone really take the Denver Nuggets that seriously before last year? I, I, you know, okay, what are they happy with these? But he came into his own, right? I mean, he just elevated that team, and all of a sudden now he's the best player in the NBA where nobody – nobody would have said that two, three years ago. So, I don't know if Brunson's able to do that, but Wait, he's, you know, but starting to elevate back himself. Back MVPs. Jokic won yeah, back now, to back MVPs. But I'm talking before that, though. Like, before that, no, did anyone say he was great? No. Even when well, he won I the mean, first MVP, it was like, eh, Denver's okay, whatever. Well, the, We didn't it, take them seriously. A lot of people Not like don't KD. take them seriously until they win a championship. But when you win a championship right. and you win it as convincingly as Denver did, oh, I yeah, think you now. have to, like, there's no question well, now. What is, is Brunson, though, doing that? With the Knicks, is he now like, okay, good, as, as the Joker was, can he take the Knicks to that next, next level? You know, that's a lot maybe. to ask, I think, right now. But, like, the Bucks situation, a little bit uncertain, right? They go, I mean, they're 30 and 13. They fired a coach and bring in Doc Rivers. Okay, we'll see how that works out. Um, the Bucks are going to be there, you're right. But I think the Knicks become that fourth team. I don't think it's the Heat. I don't think it's Cleveland. I think it's the Knicks right there. And listen, is the Garden back? I mean, like, yeah, basketball at the Garden used to be the thing. All right? I'm 53. I remember it in the 80s with Bernard King, and they weren't even that good. I remember the stories in the 70s when I was a kid, and that was the place to be. Walt Frazier and all those guys and, you know, the Willis Reed game, you hear about it now. All the Knicks fans bring it all back up every time they start getting excited about the glory days. But then in the 90s, with Riley and Ewing and, you know, Mark Jackson, I mean, that, that play, it was a physical place to go. The Knicks, it was fun. Then they went through yeah. some bad times. I mean, Carmelo was, was fun to watch, but they weren't really com- 
competitive or you know challenging for this feels Spreewell like a team teams that were pretty good. Serious. What's that? Yeah, the Spreewell teams were pretty good. They they were pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I don't know. This is I saw this number and I went, well, they're all not playing. Like nobody's playing. I don't understand. Like, that's what I thought. So, you know, and that's that's the first thing you think now when you look at the NBA. You know, you look at the the other games, Lakers, Atlanta. Okay, Lakers played yesterday. They're one and a half, two point favorites at Houston. They're playing today. Atlanta six five and a half is the number. First thing you go yeah. is oh, LeBron's not playing. Maybe LeBron and AD are playing, and D'Angelo Russell. How in the world can Atlanta, the worst team in the league, against the spread in the NBA, be six point favorites over the Lakers? What's that say about the Lakers? It's not a good case for the Lakers. So that's interesting. And then Toronto, Chicago just tipped a little while ago. Looks like Toronto's got a slight lead here. Oh no, they're trailing the Bulls, thirty-one twenty-five with a minute to go. Um, I don't know. And then I wore the Golden State stuff because, man, Golden State needs love. I mean, did you watch yeah. any of the games Saturday night? Did you see what happened with the double overtime? I and... saw the end. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean. You know, it's funny. The NBA's got to be thrilled with the emergence of the Knicks, right? You know, you, yeah. I think the Knicks in the NBA, even more so than the Rangers in hockey and in football, and, you know, and baseball with the Yanks, you know, may, maybe, but – the NBA really is elevated, as you were talking about the Garden and stuff, when, when the oh. Knicks are good. So they're getting the best of that, but unfortunately they're getting the tail end of Golden State. You know, I mean, the odds, it's, it brings a tear to my eyes. It really, it's so sad when you look at some of these opening lines, Dave, of Golden State pick em or underdogs to Sacramento at home. at home. I mean, just like, wow. Are you kidding me? Really? Are they I that know. bad? But it's, it's happening right before our eyes. It's yeah. It's um, and it's a period of adjustment for you know the books and the odds makers too, because you're like for a decade basically. I mean, you just write the number. You know what it is. It's if Golden State's playing a bad team, they're ten to twelve. If they're playing a good team, they're six to eight. You know, point favorites. You got to just you know play with the totals and find it. You know they're going to play great in the third quarter. You know they're going to win the majority of the games at home. All of that is done. And I got all this Golden State stuff over the last couple of years. I'm going to have to retire it because they're going to go back <laughs> to being that team that ain't going to win. But you're right. Um, the Knicks getting good again is, is is fun for most people, not people that really brood against everything New York, which I used to do all the time. Uh, but Bernard King was my first like favorite player that wasn't on a good team. And I thought he was just spectacular to watch. And I got one trip ever in my life to Madison Square Garden. And it was to see the Knicks play basketball because the Rangers were away. So I saw him play in person. It was great. You know, secretly, I, I, I kind of hope they get good again. As long as they don't beat the yeah. Sixers, I'll be mad if they beat the Sixers. I'd love to see them beat the Celtics. Love to see them beat the Bucks. I don't know if they can yet. Are you a Sixer fan? I didn't know that. First team, we didn't I know have you're a team P Pennsylvania in, guy. But. We didn't have a team in Pittsburgh, um, other than the Pittsburgh Pisces from the movie "The Fish That Saved Pittsburgh." That was one of, of the best all-time basketball movies ever. Doctor J was Moses Guthrie, and it was a great, fun film. But it made me like Doctor J, which then made me like the Sixers. And back in the day, ah, you remember. Right. When you were a kid, like you rooted for your state in addition to your team. Like until I went to college and actually met an Eagles fan, we used to root for the Eagles to win the NFC, the Steelers to win the AFC, and then we would have a Steagle Super Bowl, they called it. That's a Pennsylvania term where the Steelers played the Eagles. It's been an absolute dream someday to get there. And um, so I always did root for the Sixers. I my, One of my favorite teams of all time was the 1983-84 Moses Malone, Dr. J, Andrew Tony, fo, Bobby fo, Jones, Bo yeah. Cheeks, <laughs> Fo Fo Fo. I remember the starting yeah. lineup. They beat everybody. That was the everybody. best. I fell in love with the basketball then. So yes, I would love to see the Sixers win, but that's a whole other story. 
And B can't even uh, win the MVP because he can't play. No. Can't play. What's going on? Yeah. At least, you know, the injury is legit. You know, he's not taking off one game every other week. I mean, he's taking off two or three games now. He's probably not going to play tonight. So, um, you know, it's, it makes you think that, okay, he's not just like resting because he's a superstar player. He, he actually has tendonitis or whatever he has with his knee. So, uh. but. But I do like the Knicks. I'd put the Knicks in right now. Uh, seven and a half, and they're up eight. So they're looking pretty good. That Raptors yeah. team on the other side of that trade, oh. they've lost eight of nine. So they they oh. are just like, boy, you talk about the bottom dropping out. I mean, yeah. Yeah. They, they're looking like they're, they're going straight down. Straight down. They were And they were only a six and a half point dog today. They're playing the Bulls, right? Yeah. So every time yeah. Every time the Bulls play, I get the headband out. And try to Caruso. give the Caruso look. <laughs> so we do this. That's that's Alex Caruso. Last week we were on. See? Right there. Good job, Matty G. There that's you go. Caruso right there. Uh, Taylor came on and went with his assist prop over, over two and a half. It won so easy. So every time the Bulls play and we're on, we got a, we got the head pick. Caruso. Either that or one more fun. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to 1. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? He won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached, I think, with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right, unfinished business, go back, try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. It, it was tight. We still have to win these games. Like, you can talk about evenly played it to the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit. Going like, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory. And not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. All 
All right, welcome back in game live prime time here on a, a terrific Tuesday. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sharepan until 10 p.m. Eastern time. Talking a little football. We got a little uh, basketball, college and NBA. We got some hockey as well. And I got a new betting system in the NHL, which is on fire naturally. So let's bring in our uh, hockey aficionado, uh, George Kurtz, to the program. What's going on, George? How are you today, bud? Yeah, you know, I got to tell you, uh, this is not one of my favorite <laughs> weeks of the year, right? We were losing football, right? You only got one football game left. On hockey decides, let's have the bye weeks, the all-star break, all at the same time. So we have six games this week. We're down to five now, five games left. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, it, George, it's killing me. It used to be what the other way with the All Star break in baseball. Now you're worried about this too. What did San Jose do to have to play back to backs? They gave almost the entire <laughs> league off this week, but they said to the Sharks, "You play Tuesday and Wednesday of the week. We give everybody else off." What did they do? Well, 22 teams. The bye week starts this week, so they're. They just happen to have two games this week, which is odd, but uh, it is what it is, right? Uh, yeah, but I, I found that funny, too. Not only do you guys suck, but you're going to play twice while everybody else has off. You know, back so uh, isn't it bad for us, too? There's nobody on that. We're forced to watch the Sharks. Yay. Nice to get a team. I'm dying to see uh, back-to-back nights here. So, uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, it's the NHL bye week. 22 teams have off this week. And then another, I guess, the third league has off next week. They all get five days off. I just find it weird they do it around the All-Star break. You know, I kind of get it. Let's rip the Band-Aid off. You know, we'll get everything done at once. But, you know, there's not much going on here now. And I, I just don't think the NHL gets it. There's no baseball. Well, I get it. There's basketball. But football's what? There's nothing going on with football. Now you got the bye week and you decide this is going to be the week when you don't play. You would almost have, you know, a lot of this to yourself now. If you had a whole bunch of games, right? We'd all be talking hockey. You know, instead, yeah. you decide to go away too. I don't think the NHL just understands how to maximize their product. Even on Super Bowl Sunday, George, they I mean, Dave and I were talking about this, and then the NBA is no different. They only have two games as well. You know, the the NHL only has two. And listen, if you're going to give me Pittsburgh and Washington, Ovechkin, Crosby, okay, or you know, Vegas and somebody Stanley Cup champs, okay, but they're giving us St. Louis at Montreal and Vancouver. At Washington, and I know Vancouver is good now, but the NHL didn't know that. Montreal isn't any good. St. Louis is mediocre, and you know you, you have Ovechkin, but no, no one's going out of their way to watch St. Louis, Montreal, and Vancouver and Washington. It's just not happening. Why? What the, is the NHL like so blind to the obvious? I, I don't get Super Bowl Sunday. House is all there. People for looking to, to watch and bet on things, and, and we got two dopey games. Well, I don't know if you I, – I, I disagree with you there. Unless you're going to say let's uh, put them all in the afternoon. Then I can be all for it, right? Because there's nothing – honestly, maybe you're maybe you're a, pre, a Super Bowl pregame guy. All right, good luck to you watching all that crap. But, uh, you know, if you're going to put them all in the afternoon, both these games that you're talking about are in the afternoon. I believe the NBA is starting their games at 3 o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. So they'll all be done before the Super Bowl starts here. But once again, you could make that argument. You have – 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Eastern, all by yourself. Why not put some hockey in there? We're all going to be in sports. We have parties and stuff like that. So why not, you know, put on some games there? I'm not going against the Super Bowl. I think that'd be nuts. No one's going to watch it. Who's? Let's face it. I mean, unless you don't like football, are you going to want to go to a hockey game that night? I mean, you're not, right? You're going to want to watch the bowl. So I'm not challenging the NFL in the Super Bowl. Personally, I, I don't know why any – I like what golf did last week. Was it the Australian Open or tennis? I'm sorry. What tennis did last week? Oh, no, it was golf. Where they ended their tournament golf, yeah. on Saturday. But they, they ended it on right. Saturday. Why compete against the NFL on Sunday? Why? You're only going to get people who don't like football to watch on Sunday that ended on Saturday. I think, I think they should do that more often. The NFL, listen, it has faults, but they're a monster. They're a runaway train here. And I'm not challenging them. I, I said I would never challenge the NFL as far as – TV, uh, you know, TV viewership here. You know they're going to trounce you. Before we get to maybe a prop or two, George, the NHL All-Star Game used to be one of my favorite things as a hockey guy. I loved it. Campbell Conference, Wales Conference. Then it went to a little bit different format. I don't even know what it is now. The, the I mean, the, the, the skills competition used to be so much fun. They've kind of yeah. Mess that up a little bit. How do you feel about the NHL All-Star game? It used to be a perfect celebration of the game 
and an excuse to put guys together to play on lines that you knew would never play together. I used to love to see Lemieux play with somebody from, you know, Stefan Richet one year. It was just so much fun. But I don't even know what it is anymore. I mean, like, this is – I'm not even paying attention to hockey the entire week. Are you? No. I mean, uh, the actual game, sure. Anything to do with the All-Star game? Uh, I mean, might I watch it? Sure. If I'm home, I'm around. Mm. Yeah. But it's, it's not appointment viewing. I mean, and I don't even, I honestly no. don't know what, what day it's on. I don't know what time it starts, what network it's on. I have no idea. I, I'm going to assume ESPN, but I, I don't know. Yes, I'd have to be home yeah. and available. If it's on Saturday, I won't be watching because I know I'm going out with the family for dinner. So I don't have to worry about it. It's three on three. Mm. It's not hockey. All right. That is a skills right. competition. Again, that's all that is. And it can be fun at times, but there's going to be no hitting. None. All right. These guys, and I understand that. You know, because I don't want, I don't want, listen, I'm an Islander fan and they're terrible anyway, but, you know, if I'm a Ranger fan, I don't want Sabanajet hitting anybody. I don't want Kreider hitting anybody, taking a chance of hurting his shoulder. Now they can't play next week. I, and I don't want to, I don't want that either. It's a physical league. I get it. Uh, as for the skills competition, it's the same situation. I likely will record it. I will not record the All-Star game, but I likely will record the skills and watch it eventually. Mm. You, know, uh, you know, maybe an hour or two behind so I can skip through all the garbage. You know, I'll stay on social media so I, I don't find out who wins this, the fastest skater competition and all that. I find that somewhat interesting. But even that, I mean, the breakaway competition has gotten ridiculous. Yeah, they're all trying to show off the TV and, you know, wear the, you know, I don't know, the blue sunglasses and all that. I, I don't find that interesting at all. I want to see the skill. I want to see guys shooting the puck 105 miles an hour. I like the accuracy with those foam things that get broken into a thousand pieces. I think that's kind of fun. I find mm. it kind of cool here. But uh, like I said, I'll record that, though. Because there's too much downtime there. The game itself, I will not record. The All Star game, the Pro Bowl, whatever the hell they call it now, the football, I'm not watching. You know, I, I don't care. The skills thing, same thing. I'll record it. Some of that might be mildly fun. Although, as much as I like dodgeball, still don't know what that has to do with football. Yeah. All right. So here's my new betting system, George. NHL. Tell me what you think. And I don't know if you know. We could all guess, I suppose, uh, but maybe you know of a site that I can get the exact record. But so I'm looking through different things here, right? You know, uh, the shot sign goal, the boys in Vegas have kind of caught up to us. So I'm looking for something different, and I think I found it. FanDuel, anyway, offers, will a goal be scored in the first five minutes of the game? No hmm. is generally, depending on the game, anywhere from minus 2 to 1 to minus 250. It, it's it, in that okay. range, right? Now, who wants to lay that, right? Nobody. But FanDuel, God bless them, allows you to parlay that bet. Some they do, some they don't. This one they do. So I could parlay two games, no goals in the first five minutes, and get that down to even money, and, and really it's – about plus 110, plus 115, again, depending on the odds. But it never goes below even. So Saturday night, I actually tried it Friday. There were four games. It went two and two. I ended up breaking even. Saturday, 14 games, guys. Ooh. 13 did not have a goal scored in the first five minutes. 13. Whoa. As just a goof, wow. I did $10 on like 14 or seven different parlays, and I right. hit six of them. It was just like, oh, my oh. God, this is easy money. So both of you guys know hockey. So what do you think the percentages are? It's not 14 and or 13 and 1, right? I mean, but no. I don't notice that many goals in the first five minutes. Is this not just an easy, you know, cash in before the boys in Vegas realize they're screwing up on that? George, you go first. It's funny how you were talking about that. I'm like, oh, somebody was talking about this. And then you said, oh, it was Scott Wessel. It was your tweets I it's was me. reading on Saturday. I'm going to go with that Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks and, for uh, paying attention, George. I, asked, I, I do my job, right? I'm, I'm checking out things out here. And it started dawning on me as well here. Now, I will give this for a word of caution. What's going on this week? The All-Star break. All-Star All right. break. A lot of teams, that la their last game was Saturday. Oh. And they were getting the hell out of Dodge. All right, they're already on. They're probably on the bench going, okay, I'm going to the Caribbean here. And I'm out of here. All right, yep. Flights at 9 o'clock, yep. you know. So I might caution you there. All right. Uh, uh, there are certain teams I'm not going to bet uh, either way because they, they're terrible. San Jose tonight, I'm probably not doing it. I know that they're playing Seattle, scores a lot of goals. They might be going the first five minutes. But uh, do I think this is something you can parlay with? Yeah. Not automatic, 
You know, I'm not doing seven parlays on a 14-game night and taking all 14 teams here. But I think this is one you can pick and choose. I think you said the important word there on your first thing about shots on goal. Vegas has caught up with us. They'll catch up yeah. to this as well. It might be a season. It might be a, a two seasons. They always do. They always do. But hockey, they're a little slower. They're a little slower with right. hockey because there's just not as many of us on, are playing on hockey, right? Betting on hockey. Uh, so uh, I think it is something you can take advantage of now, but I think it will go away uh, in the future. I just don't know if it's a near future next season, but it, they'll catch up on this eventually and make it the first 10 minutes, the first eight minutes, whatever they're going to do. Do you have the answer to the question, Wetzel? Did you ask a question that you don't know the answer to? Because I'm going to guess it's yeah, probably – Yeah, no, I don't know the answer. Oh, you're I, like the kids when I don't they know the ask answer. a question and don't know the yeah. answer. It's one of the and rare now times. Have to, uh, do you have, right, do you have the lawyer, answer? Is there a site I can go to? You know what that, to? The worst. Hockey reference uh, might have it. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. reach out to somebody. I'll have you an answer hopefully by the yeah. end of the show. Um, I'm going to guess that uh, it's slightly better than 50%. Um, that, really? You know, there's no, no. goals. Yeah, it's – it can't well, be that minus big. 250, right. minus 250 is probably, you know, I don't know if it's 60%, but it's, it. look at the implied odds. That's what will tell you what it is because it is around the same right. price for, for every team. So it's a universal thing. It's just yeah. a mathematical number. It's not, uh, there's not much thought into it or any of that stuff. So I'll find out. It, I, I would guess it's, it's between 55 and 60% now. You know, but there's if teams that the give case, them up then, more. Yeah. How about if we just bet yes then on every single team? Because the yes is like plus 180. It's plus money. And right. If, yeah. And if you think it's going to hit, you know, 40% of the time, we'll say, well, then that's plus money. money for us. Yeah. Right. See, that's so, why I want to know. Are we going about this the wrong way? Maybe we should bet the yes every single player and just hope, you, you know, out of 10 games money. that night. You hit four of them. You love the plus money. I know. I do. I know. I do love the plus money. I know. It's it's a nice parlay yeah. because you can play that. Uh, like my new favorite hockey bet has been pick a goal score. Like maybe pick David Pasternak on on a first Boston because you don't want to bet Boston there. You know they're they're killing everybody. You're not going to get a great price. But you pick Boston right. to win and Pasternak anytime goal. All of a sudden, money, so that you're even plus money depending on who they're playing here. All right, you're not going to do it automatically every game. Uh, you know, the Oilers, Zach Hyman's been up for somebody I've loved to pick under this. You know, and the Oilers winning. Uh, they're never losing anyway, you know, and so that's been another a little fun bet I've been doing, a fun, fun little parlay that I just uh, started this year, and this could be right along with it. You know, once again, you pick uh, the parlay, uh, the goals that you like, you know, whatever game, and then you pick a, a winner too, a win you think is an automatic, and you get a much better number. Any thought real quick, Seattle, San Jose, or or Columbus, no score with St. Louis after one? I got one on St. Louis and Seattle. Over, I think, Seattle, San Jose as well. Mm. Okay. By the way, another first five. Hit again in that St. Louis-Columbus game. Cha-ching, cha-ching. There it is. Let's go Sharks and Kraken. No goals. <laughs> Thanks, George. See you, George. Anytime, boys. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Favorite. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to one. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? He won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached 
I think with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right, unfinished business, go back, try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. It, it was tight. You still have to win these games. Like, we talk about even the equated to the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit going, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory and not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back. It is in game live prime time. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sherpin flying along here, closing out hour number one with a betting opportunity. You don't get this too often, uh, but we have one tonight. The subject of our black cloud. All right, we're going to go uh, rare. You know, we don't generally do uh, college basketball for black clouds, but we're going to pick one tonight. Oh. Good good situational play <laughs> as Dave is all prepared for the raindrops to come down here. Yes. <laughs> there yes. you go. Yes. I like that. Yes. I like that. Um, yeah. Not many times a team, Dave, will blow an 11-point lead with one minute Ooh. left, but that is uh, yeah. something that Colorado State did earlier this week or late last week, uh, whatever it was. Uh, they blew an 11 point lead at Wyoming. They lost the game. Uh, uh, unbelievable, right? You remember that with, uh, with Duke in Maryland, uh, many, many moons ago. So same yep. thing happened. So now they're hosting San Diego state. So we're going to get one of two uh-huh. Colorado Ram teams. We're either going to get a team that's just like down and out and so depressed that they can't rebound or, and I don't Ooh. think that's going to be the case, or we're going to oh. get a team that's going to be out for blood. And I think those fans are going to be rocking. They're a good team. You know, they're, they're a nationally ranked team. We're not asking for a bad team to do something special here. Um, so give me Colorado State laying the two and a half at home against San Diego State. Just yes, there okay. you go. San Diego State's a good team, you know, but yeah. I just think this Colorado State team's going to be out, and, and they're never going to let off the foot uh, off the pedal at any time they get a double digit lead tonight. So Colorado State got to win tonight. They have to win tonight at home. Okay. I mean, I did put the, the hood up to make sure, you know, for the weather, uh, the black cloud, the rain, rain down. But I think you're going to make it rain tonight. I think I think we can. Yeah. I, I like the side. Listen, winning on the road in college basketball has been harder this year than it has been in recent years. And it hasn't been easy at all in recent years. So bounce back spot, Colorado State. You surprised me again. I didn't see that one coming. But – you know, the black cloud with me and you has been good. Let's, let's go, Rams. There you go.
It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Prime time, hour number two of our two hour extra- uh, extravaganza on this uh, terrific Tuesday, little tongue tied action. Scott Wetzel, Dave Sheriff, and until uh, 10 p.m. Eastern time, flying along. Fast first hour, no doubt, fast second hour. Cam Stewart will join us in about 40 minutes. We'll go over this weekend stuff, some maybe his golf picks. Uh, if he holds that off uh, for today, maybe tomorrow, uh, I just get the, some winners from him. And in the meantime, it's, it's Dave and I looking at the NBA, little college basketball. Uh, one hockey game going on. We got one more later on tonight. Got a pretty good college basketball game Dave and uh, every time I, I get the games on here every time I turn around you know I got Marquette leading by you know 12 to 15 over Villanova I did love Marquette I was going to buck the home team non-ranked favorite system over the mm-hmm. road team ranked underdog system because I really I, I don't think Villanova is very good this year uh, and then every time I turn around and look like two minutes later, all of a sudden Villanova's got it down to four or five. <laughs> so yep. it goes from four or five to back up to 13. I, I'm sitting on Marquette, 77-72. I see with two minutes left. What do you think of that game, if anything? That's funny. We talked about that game today as well. Um, and you either do what you did and fade that trend or you just bet on Villanova and ride the trend. Um, trends are your friends until they're not. And it's going to turn. Uh, that's a hard game. I looked at that game and when I throw my hands up, sometimes you just see the number or you just don't have an opinion. Uh, flip a coin for me. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think Marquette is a good team. I don't know if Villanova is a good team. I really don't. And I talked about it earlier with K-Dub, trying to figure out who the best teams are in college basketball starts for me this week. Like, this is the week right. you really dive in. Football's done. I've been watching hockey and NBA since the beginning of the season, so I'm good there. But the college baskets, you try to go, all right, what conference is the best conference? Is it the Big 12? Big 12 deepest, top heavy, maybe SEC, maybe, I don't know, North Carolina is losing at Georgia Tech today, uh, right now. Wow. We've got four minutes to go, and North Carolina is losing on the road. Winning on a road's tough. Uh, I see you keep looking over and sweating that game. That's good. I, I, I don't get to see you sweat these games that much while we're doing the yeah, show. I this know. is fun. I like, I like to see you doing a little side check. That's good. The other one is getting their ass kicked. Uh, you know, I went with one. I, I bucked the trend on one. I didn't on the other. I, I did like Kansas State tonight. Uh, they, they were laying a point and a half. And I, you know, the, the, to me, they're as good Smoke. as Oklahoma. But they're down 35-19 at the half. 19 points for Kansas State at the half. Ugh. That's, that's – that's, is that done? Like, that's done. Like, that, that them coming back, I don't think it's really um, – you know, I wouldn't tell you to rip up your ticket if you had a ticket because in the book I used to have to go help people get their ticket out of the garbage <laughs> can and piece them together was the worst thing ever. Um, but this one's done. Right, like you're. Yeah. Have you resigned to the fact that like you can split? I don't. I think we wouldn't yeah. worry about Kansas State. They only scored 19 points. They're not coming back. Both games, both teams desperate in that spot. Right, that's a tough game. Um, and you, you're right. You see that number and you go, why is Kansas State two and a half, three point favorite against Oklahoma? Oklahoma's ranked. Kansas State is not. Kansas State coming off a couple bad losses. They, they just, the, the obvious thing is to play Oklahoma, so we get too smart and play K-State, right? No good. No good at all. Yeah. By the way, the uh, the Big 12 football schedule came out today. I don't know if you had a chance to see that. I did not. So, yeah, you didn't miss much, you know, which is why I'm going to bring it up because, you know, I, I love these schedules, and, and we, we kind of yeah. have an idea who's playing, but so – I get the schedule. Someone on Twitter put out a graphic. They listed all 12, 15, whatever teams there are, and then they, they put them all in there, right? So 
I'm okay. scrolling down, you know, and I'm scrolling down and I'm scrolling yeah. down. And I'm looking for this big game. I was like, w- w- where's Oklahoma? You know, Texas. I'm like, oh, that's right. They're both in the, you know, the, the, the SEC now. <laughs> like, where's Texas and Baylor? I was like, oh, that's right. Texas is gone. You know, where's Oklahoma, Kansas State? Uh, that's right. You know, so all, all oh, these, like, no. games I'm looking for, I'm realizing – Gone. They're not there anymore. They're gone. Gone. It, it, gone. And there isn't a there isn't a big game in the lot, Dave. There, it's just a bunch oh, of no. you know good teams, really? Utah, and but, but Kansas State. But no, you can't. To me, anyway, and I and I love college football, and I follow as much as anybody. I can't come up with one monster game in the Big Twelve anymore. It's just a bunch of. You know, American <sighs> Football Conference on roids. That, that's all it is. It's just a bunch of <laughs> mediocre to halfway decent teams. It, it's just, wow. Well, I mean, Arizona and Arizona State's in there now, right? Like, they're both in the Big 12. That yeah. didn't do much for you. No. Nah. Big 12 after dark now because there's no more Pac-12 after dark. So That's true. You know, we'll be on in the fall. We'll be watching a lot of these schools late while everybody's sleeping. And, I hope. You know, we're still up watching. Well, I, I think, think so. About that. Are we, yeah. are we not going to get any, like, 9 o'clock games this year? We may just go from, like, 6 o'clock to the bailout special in Hawaii. I mean, it's, Mountain there, West. There's going to be, I think, there's going to be a limited, because half of the Pac-12 games right. are going to be at the Big Ten schools, because they're now Big right. Ten schools. So they're going to play Illinois at 9 o'clock Pacific, noon Eastern. They're not going to have those late games anymore. Half the schedule is in the Eastern time zone or the Central time zone. So I don't think for half the season we're going to have those specials. It's kind of a bummer. No Red River shootout. I don't blame you for looking for that. That was always a fun, big event in the middle of the season. Kind of stinks. You bummed me out with that. Uh, The Big 12 was was a fun, like, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm bummed now. I'll have to look and see who's in it that I didn't know was now in the Big 12. This is going to be an issue, is it not? Like the conference realignment, the stuff we've been used to our whole lives is all done. No more Pac-12. Texas and Oklahoma in the SEC. How much longer is the ACC going to be a conference? Notre Dame's next move is going to dictate where all this goes. Florida State for how long? I don't know. I'm, I'm, you, you bum me out. You got me. I got me thinking now. Thanks, thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, but it was just uh, like such okay. a like I, I'm just scrolling and I'm looking and I'm looking and you know where's that big game and I'm, I'm you know I'm looking at Baylor Texas Tech or you know Houston versus Arizona. I mean, you know, who cares, right? I mean, um, <laughs> someone's gonna have to emerge out of that conference. I, I, I'm assuming they're gonna get an automatic bid into the playoffs. I gotta read all the playoff. You know, goofiness and who gets what and, and everything, but it's coming down to the it basically. You're right with the ACC. It, it's if Florida State and Clemson ever left the ACC to join either the Big Ten or the SEC, that's it. We oh, it's over. That's it. Yeah, that's that's the next move. That's the that's the big move. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll be talking about home NCAA football games next season. Think about that playoff games. Wow. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Pick. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to one. So 
there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? He won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached. I think with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right. Unfinished business. Go back. Try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast. Only on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. And it was tight. You still have to win these games. Like, you talk about evenly played it for the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit going, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory and not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game live prime time here on a Tuesday, 12 past the hour. Scott Wetzel and Dave Sherapan. Eight seconds left, although there were four a second ago. Somehow or another, they put four more seconds on the clock, but it looks like Marquette's <laughs> going to win 84 80. How do you go from four to eight unless people say Wetzel's got Marquette? So let's give Villanova as much opportunity as they can to, to win this basketball game. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now it's down to three. So uh, yeah. that looks like, barring a miracle, that's going to be a winner, Dave. How about, uh, you know, NBA? We got the Celtics leading the Pacers, uh, 2024 basketball. Here we go again with this Pacer mm-hmm. team. 97-94, yep. three minutes left to go in the third quarter, over under 269 and a half. <laughs> yep. Well, Halliburton back. Uh, another one of those situations where – ah. In the book, right, you don't know what you're going to get when the guy first came back. So right. talked about that also this morning. You saw, I saw that number move up on the board, and I was like, yeah, that's probably an overplay, but we'll sit and wait and watch. I think they'll probably trade leads. You get the Celtics on a back-to-back. They, did, they won but didn't cover against the Pelicans yesterday. So that's where that one's at. What do you make of the Lakers? I asked you before about the Knicks and are they a good team? And uh, P. Rold asked me today, at 24 and 24, what are the Lakers? And I'm just going to throw that exact question right to you. What are the Lakers? Because they are down 103 to 86 with 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left in the third quarter, getting blown out again after getting blown out of Houston yesterday. The Hawks yeah. are the worst team in the league, Wetzel, against the spread, and the Lakers are getting housed. What are the Lakers? Wow. You know, they're they're sitting there in purgatory. You know, last year LeBron tanked it at the end of the year because he knew they weren't any good, but now, now they're like, even if you tank it, you're not going to get a top three draft choice. You're not that bad, no. so... Do you try and win? You try and get everybody healthy? AD's not playing tonight. LeBron is. I give him credit for that. Playing a third game in in four nights and back-to-back. Like you mentioned, they got blasted by the Rockets last night, getting crushed by the Hawks. You know what's coming in a lot? You know, guys on the podcast know we've been playing it. 
under LeBron James points. And when I say it's coming in, it's like barely, it's almost like LeBron knows his number and he's purposely not getting there. We must have won like six bets with him with his number at 27 and a half and he'd score 27. And then they lowered to 26 and a half and he'd score 26. And then they lowered to 25 and a half and he scored 25. They had it at 24 and a half last night. He scored 24. I mean, he is coming as close as humanly possible, but he's going under every single game. And what's great is he will have his 35 point night every blue moon. And then that keeps the number high when in reality, it should be probably a point or two lower than what you're getting with him. So right. I didn't play it today. It was only 24 and a half. And I said, yeah, you know, it's the Atlanta Hawks. The you know, Lakers are going to score 120 points. So, but I did play his over seven and a half assists. Uh, I know he had five at halftime. So he's got to be pretty close if not winning that one. But I, you got to bet against them, I guess, right? Just like Golden State, yeah. just keep on betting against them. They look so good when they look good. Four, he's got 14 assists. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Or 14 points. 14 points. Oh, how many 14 assists? Points. How many assists? I don't care about the points anymore. Six. All right. So I need uh, I need two more. Two Six. more. Hit five at I half time. This. Yeah, bum. I just got this from my hockey guy. At PSU okay. Auto on the Twitter. My friend Chris um, does great work with the sheets and the first periods and all this other stuff. 66% to the no on a goal in the first five minutes. He's got an up-to-date number and chart that he's been keeping track of this season. So there you go. The no is is right around 65 to 66% at PSU Auto. PSU for Penn State. PSU Auto. O-T-T-O. Phenomenal work. The guy does spreadsheets. O-T-T-O. At PSU Auto. Great for Chris the podcast. Otto. Oh, yeah, got it. Opposite picks. Follow okay. him. Does great work. Big hockey guy. Lives in Pittsburgh, but he, he does work with us on uh, on Boston University the Book. Great follow. Got a whole account. Puts his plays up every day. So that's an exact number. So there you go. That's why that price is what it is. So you got to be careful if you start doing the minus 250s and a minus 250s. Yes, that's even money or plus 105s. Don't let that success the other night cloud your judgment. There's the, 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 it gets 13 his, and 1. You know, I'm 13 just saying. And 1. I'm you just know? saying. I'm, you know. It's tough to keep on clicking that yes, yes, yes when that sucker keeps on coming up. No, no, no. <laughs> and you know, it's a fun bet, too. You know, the yeah. have you, you know, Dave, oh. right? The, the, the gambler wants aggravation. He, he wants agita. That, that's why we do this thing. It's like, why do you get married? You, you know, secretly you want agita. You, you, you want aggravation. You want agita. So that's same thing I with this. Married. So That is 100% no, huh? not why I got married. No, you didn't okay. tell me that. Okay. You didn't tell me about dropping off the kid at college. And you didn't tell me that yep. about getting married. I did not get married for the agita, but continue, sir. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I did it anyway. So I don't ask why, right? <laughs> So when you're watching game, seeing that clock go from 20 minutes to five, you know, that down to 15, it's like a five minute thrill. It's like the longest. Can we say this? Nah, I won't say that. It's like the longest, oh. you know what I won't, I won't of all time. Right? It's just five minutes of pleasure. But then, you know, it's, I had a goal score at the fifth at the uh, four seconds after the five minutes of one of the games on Saturday. It was just like, oh, that's wow. great. That's great. You know, you yeah. know, you're doing well when you get a goal scored at the five oh four mark. You know that that that's All right. But sometimes you gotta you gotta be careful when you go to the scoreboard because sometimes they'll give you how much time is left in the period, and then that other depends. times they'll give you how much time expired in the period. <laughs> so when you see the three depends and a half, it's like, yes, right. <laughs> Yeah, you got to be careful about that. Otto's watching the show. He said zero people on earth tonight thought that the Columbus-St. Louis game would be scoreless so far at this point in the game right now. It's still scoreless. So, still scoreless. Listen, All-Star Week is crazy. You got to be careful. Watch the first fives. Uh, Goal in the first five minutes. That's a fun bet. You're right. Um, As far as the other thing, let's bet the over on five minutes. I mean, come on. Over. On the five minutes. Seriously. 
What are you doing? It's over. Bet over. I don't no? know. I don't know. Um, it's, it's, you know, if you, you know, I'm going to get greedy and now put a three team parlay in and now really we get odds. Maybe it's a never four enough teamer. You know, it's now you're starting ah, to get six, seven to one odds. Maybe it's just going to be what one of those doing? nights again. Oh, you know? please. Who needs even money when I can parlay three or four? This is not good. How long before they bump those odds up? You know what they did bump up? FanDuel, anyway? God bless them. You play this little cat and mouse game. Well, that's all right. We'll we'll stay ahead of you, FanDuel. You used to be able to get teams plus three and a half goals at like minus, you know, six to one if you want to build those goofy ladders that was popular last year. So you put a bunch of those in. Now they bumped it up to like minus 1,200. When you get three and a half. Oh, goals. so really? Yeah. Yeah. Now you can't go on three and a half goals. Now it's worthless. Yeah. They, they basically doubled the VIG on those things. Because who's betting that straight, right? Nobody. It's all, you know, it's all parlays. No. So yeah, they realize just, that. Yeah. So, all right. You want to put it in a parlay? Yeah, that's the, minus three to one? <laughs> no, no. It's going to cost you. That, that's yeah, the ten trick. To one. The book, that's the only that's the only defense the book has to that because the Discord groups, yeah. the betting groups, the betting bots, you know, everybody kind of gets on that same train and you got to make sure you mitigate the risk. That's the job of the book is to mitigate the risk. Speaking of mitigating risk, Georgia Tech just scored a bucket. 74-73, 4 seconds to go. They're beating North Carolina, I can't believe. It. Wow, that would be a big win for the Texans. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices, and we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Pick. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers had the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to one. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? I, he won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached, I think, with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right, unfinished business, go back, try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. And it was tight. We still have to win these games. Like, we talk about evenly played it to the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit going, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory. And not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one 
of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. In-game live prime time here at 25 past the hour. Hour number two of our uh, two-hour extravaganza. Fast little two hours here on the grid. Scott Wetzel and Dave Sherapan watching some NBA college basketball and uh, the one NHL game that's going on. Still no score. St. Louis and uh, Columbus is the Blue Jackets. Oh, the feisty Blue Jackets uh, playing some good D. You could have had no goal in the first 35 minutes and be a winner in, the, in that one. So, yes. Baskets, uh, speaking of winners, uh, Knicks by 22 over the Jazz. Well, that mm-hmm. was just, uh, that's one of those rare times. You think it's a sucker line, made no sense, but unless something disastrous happens, they're, they're going to cover that one. Bulls by nine over the Raptors, uh, laying six and a half. Now it's nine and a half. A little surprised it's not even further up. And the Celtics heading into the fourth quarter. 106 103 after three with the Pacers with an over under of 267 and a half, which I don't yep. know. Are all of a sudden they going to start playing defense, Dave, in the fourth quarter because you have 109 or you have 209 points? Well, you need a 60 point, eh, not even a 59 point fourth quarter. Right. How are they not getting that unless, like I said, all of a sudden they're going to play defense in the fourth? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, well. Keep an eye on that. Uh, you mentioned North Carolina lost. North Carolina Duke yeah. is Saturday night. That's a big game. Um, playing on the road right now is just really, really hard in college hoops. You know, South Carolina, though, went on the road to beat Tennessee, who, what, number five in the country, something like that, 63 to 59. Yeah. Some Bad college basketball games, too. Like, I don't know. I'm, DePaul's one of the worst teams in the country. Seton Hall today at DePaul. Do you see that number? Like, Seton Hall's 10 and a half, 11. The game closed on the road. How bad is DePaul? You're old enough, and I'm old enough to remember Ray Meyer, and DePaul had, like, yeah. basketball players. That was a fun – the DePaul Blue Demons was a fun uniform and a fun, like, the whole the whole deal – they're one of the worst teams in college baskets, but how can you not take 10 and a half or 11 against Seton Hall tonight? That seems like an obvious yeah. play to me, right? Uh, well, and DePaul fired their maybe? head coach last week. We hit on the uh, coach's fired system with that. On uh, Well, we had a Tuesday, <sighs> Tuesday or Wednesday last week, we had every system come in. We had two coaches fired system with uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, and DePaul, we had the not anti-celebration system. What was the other one? Uh, we had some other system um, uh, in hockey. Which one? That was click. That was Wednesday because you sent the text. What? It was yes. Wednesday when me and you did the show because I was I was flying yeah. back Tuesday from the East Coast and we and you did the show Wednesday, and you sent a text. I don't even think you were on off the train yet on the way home. Everything with all the systems hit early. Bob's trip. Yeah. Matty G said, you know, cash, cha-ching, whatever the, the, the emoji was. You're right. I forget what they all were, though. I can't remember yeah, my it was, name. It was the coaches fired. Coaches yep. fired in the NBA with the Bucks and, and DePaul okay. in college. It was the mom right. system with Carolina at Boston. Mom's, that night was so good. We had another system, the best system of all. Of the all the creme de la creme, and we forgot to give it out. And that is Golden State was playing their first game after the poor assistant coach died last week. But they had a couple of games postponed, and I just completely forgot about it. And then the Warriors won by like 30. They blew out the Atlanta Hawks. That was another one. That's how good a night that was. So yeah, ridiculous. I yeah. do like these systems. I do. Okay. Um, well, 
So you got a system you know, for Loyola Marymount and Gonzaga later, or Fresno State at UNLV. They're both eight o'clock Pacific, eleven o'clock Eastern games. Uh, either yeah. one, I mean, the Zags are two touchdown favorites against Loyola Marymount, and UNLV is actually laying eight points against UNLV or against Fresno State. I can't believe that number. Yeah, I don't. It's not a system, but I play overs in Gonzaga games. Now this year it's oh. been about five hundred. Yeah, it, they're not. Okay. You know, we're learning the hard way. They're not the same Gonzaga team as old. They just no. No, no shame in that. No. But they're not scoring the right. eighty, ninety points like it's a blink no. of an eye. It's not. You know. So yeah. I still do it, just thinking. All right, by the end of the year, I'll probably end up five hundred uh, with that. But that that's it's one fifty two and a half too. It's not a big number. Boy, you would have given your no. left leg for a number like that last year, two years, three years ago with the Zaga team. I mean, they're good for one hundred twenty points left themselves. Left leg or your but, right leg? You gave your well, left. Well, I'm a righty, one? so I'll get my left one. You know, so yeah, I'll, I'll give the left. Do one. the same game parlay for the people, one. please. Get this in here, please. Come on. Little uh, little SGP time. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, not a whole lot on the uh, NHL board, but we do have one game starting at the top of the hour that we could use for our same game parlay, and we are going to shift sides, sort of. Uh, we got what? San Jose at home against Seattle. Yeah, uh, we're going to put our hard-earned what? American money on the uh, San Jose Sharks, believe it or not. Sort of. Can't really, with a straight face, put American money on them to win outright. So we'll go conservative, even though they're playing good hockey. They've won like three of their last four, believe it or not, or four of their last six or something goofy like that. And they're at home. They're in one of those, you know, those streaks that we saw them have earlier in the year, I guess. So give me San Jose plus a goal and a half at minus only 134. So, I, you know, um, I can't go for them to win outright, so I'll go conservative. Uh, then okay. we're going to go with this guy, Fabian Zutterland, uh, to score a goal for San Jose, plus 250. Uh, Thomas Hurdle might not play. He's their best player. He's their second best scorer. Never heard of him, but that's okay. Good old Fabian Zutterland is going to score a goal for us tonight at plus 250. He's got four goals uh, this month, which is like the most for San Jose. Um, okay. And we're going to go total goals over three and a half. You know, four goals, that's not a big deal. Minus uh, 750, that's just to kind of okay. up the odds here a little bit. And then there's our favorite little bets uh, that we had on there a little second ago. Um, no goals in the first five minutes, minus 235 tonight. So add it all up. You got four legs. Decent little 7-1, to one, basically, 695. 7-1 to one, uh, parlay on that one. Uh, the big one is getting the, our guy Fabian there to score a goal. You got to get you gotta get Fabian to score a goal. Yeah. So you went alt total, three and a half. You got that thing at minus 750. Yeah. Like, how can that not get there? So that's good. Right. Um, I can't believe you took the, the, the Sharks. I This is after one of the yeah. last times we did the Sharks, I thought you swore off the Sharks. I said, I, you, you said I can't do it anymore. You just ignored yeah. that? Like, we're back? We're back on SJ Sharky? Yeah. They won three of five. They're, they're uh, three and two, their last five. They're at home. Seattle stinks. They're as streaky as anybody. They're on one of their negative streaks. So, um, you know, they lost to the Rangers 6-5, to five, so I'm getting a goal and a half on that one. And they lost to the, the Golden Knights 5-4. to four. So, really, they've covered goal line, puck line, five straight. So, the, yeah, the I know I'm going to be kicking path. myself, especially yeah. if Hurdle doesn't play tonight. But what are you going to do? No, that's fine. I, I was on Seattle. Uh, Seattle plays Sunday night. Seattle won four two, yeah. I believe, Sunday night in regulation. I yeah, did want to empty netter with like five seconds left. Yeah, I to, I, I didn't have the puck nice. line. I had the regulation win. So and I didn't watch okay. one second of it. I saw it was close. And then I uh, saw the final. My my youngest daughter turned ten on Sunday, so we do a tradition where we take the whoever's birthday it is gets to pick what place they go to dinner. So we went and did the uh, the hibachi teppanyaki. The guy cooked all the food in front of us. Oh yeah, my and, kids love that too. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot of fun. He lights the thing on fire, blows the train I whistle. Squirt the juice at have, you there. Yeah. Ah, uh, the whole thing. Yes, the whole thing. So <laughs> they all do the same thing. East Coast, it's West Coast is, is like exactly it's the, the same, same procedure, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very rarely do you get something a little bit different, but it's fun. 
you know, he cut the egg, throws it up and divides it in half and the whole, the whole deal. So I checked that score and said, all right, Seattle won in regulation. That was good. We're not going to dinner tonight, but I guess I'll be checking it after dinner. Hopefully you win that. You get the goal, the first goal to come not in the first five minutes by that guy. Yes. That would be perfect. Yeah. That would be perfect. We don't All want right. that. We, that's Ultimately, we can't have any goal uh, in, in the first five minutes. Yeah, we, we don't want that. Right. So that'll be right. the first step okay. of our four-stepper. Then we get Fabian to score a goal, and then, then we'll be okay. So uh, okay. good little start for our uh, Black Cloud play. Colorado State up uh, – uh, never mind. It was a good start. A second ago, they were leading by like 15. It's down to three, 23 20 over San Diego State. Do you make that noise when you're referee? Do you ever just like let that like, like out when you're refereeing? Because yeah. it makes me laugh when we do the shows together because I can feel your frustration through that little. That's 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 the dad in you, like the defeated, <laughs> that, like. No? I repped a third, fourth grade girls basketball game last night. I need video of this. We got to hire a guy to have you doing this. This is priceless. Let me sit back. How was it? Please tell us all. Oh, it was like torture. It was just, God bless them, right? They don't know any better, but it it was just like, (laughs) there's got to be a better way to make 45 bucks. What was the final score? Give me the over under. I'll say 21 and a half. Up. Not even close. It was nothing, nothing heading into the fourth quarter. I'm looking oh, at no. an overtime game played until midnight waiting for one of these two teams to score. What? But they actually, one team came through and scored six points uh, and, and won six to two. Thank God. Six Otherwise, we'd still be playing. <laughs> Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Player. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to 1. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? He won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached, I think, with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right, unfinished business, go back, try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. It, it was tight. We still have to win these games. Like, you can talk about even the equator for the NBA. Like, OKC just rolling into Detroit. But like, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory. And not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to 
before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Hi, right, welcome back in game live prime time here 40 past the hour Scott Wetzel Dave Sherpan joined by our good buddy takes over the top of the hour with the uh, game Morency Mr. Cam Stewart ah what's going on Cam hopefully cashing a bunch of tickets over the weekend what do you get your eyes on uh, tonight was it a profitable weekend for you oh no Scott oh, it's no. it was the opposite oh. of profitable. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I was I was a cow at the slaughterhouse there no, no it's okay don't worry about it we, we're gonna have those weeks the week before I was thinking hey Go seven and one. Hey, I'm king of the world. Right. And then you get back to reality. That's a, I'm not going to lie. Like some of these guys do in this industry. No, I got smoked. I got absolutely pummeled. Like that Baltimore game, like was like <laughs> bullets everywhere. I just can't believe yeah. how their failures in that game. Scott, if they win that game, just win, not even cover. It's a, it's very right. good because I took San Francisco live when they were getting murdered, got some of it back. But yeah. Hey, Baltimore, let's just say, Scott, too much clicking, too many places. And I look at my, I'm like, Appers, I'm like, ooh, I put Baltimore in a lot of stuff. That was probably a lesson to yeah, everybody. Yeah. Don't keep on hitting the button all the time. Like, sometimes I'll bet on the golfer four times. I'm like, why did, why did I do that? You know, but uh, it usually works <laughs> with Paul Bovey. It doesn't work for me. I just, I, I, when I hit the button multiple times, I'm a loser. But uh, this Raptor game has actually become very interesting. I was watching probably the worst hockey game I've ever seen in my life between Columbus and St. Louis, 0-0 <laughs> after the second period. It's honest to God, like, if you paid for tickets for this game, God bless you. Um, I hope I, I hope they're free. But this, because usually a 0-0 game, you're like, hey, great goal tag. No, just just horrible hockey. I'm on Columbus, so uh, I guess we're riding that one out. I'm taking the dog. And, Scott, I thought you'd have your um, – I, I, I see later on your, your favorite team, S.J. Sharkey, uh, playing Seattle tonight. I got to believe that's got the Wetzel, mm. uh, either Dark oh, Cloud yeah. special, or there's something involved in that game. Yeah. As a, I wish yes, I could bet is. on what Scott's doing instead of betting on <laughs> NFL football. That's how I get rich. <laughs> right, Dave? I actually, I, yeah. I'm betting on San Jose tonight. Believe it or not. I actually, uh, I yeah, I, yeah, I, I took I, a plus a goal and a half. Not, yeah, I'm good. There I, you no, go. I'm, we're reading each other's mail. Here's the deal. Seattle. They've been winning games, playing better, but I've been watching this team play a lot because I have, like, you know, futures on these guys and season totals and stuff. So they've been very lucky. They've been getting up in games and hanging on and stuff. And San Jose is a different team at the Shark Tank. So let's hope SJ Sharky has some teeth tonight. They're a very big dog, and they could be in a good spot. Seattle's played a lot of hockey too, right? They play Sunday. That game, they've been uh, they, they've just been playing a lot of hockey. I know the break's coming up, and maybe they want to pay. Hey, I just think the Sharks – since Logan Couture came back too, they seem to be a good bet. The, the price is right, guys. Like it's just that's too much. Like you can't yeah. be laying 240 with a with a Seattle team on the road. That's just that's an Edmonton number. That's not a Seattle Kraken number, right? So right. anyway, uh, yeah. Edmonton would probably be like 350, but anyway, uh, or more. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, the Sharks with you. Show me that parlay again, Scott. I, I like to see uh, yeah. not the dark cloud, the, you know. the any game. Same yeah. game. Parlor. I got the Look at this baby yeah, over Zetterland. three and a half goals. What the heck is, who is this guy? Oh my god, that's stop. what I said. I love Was it. He's the second leading scorer on the team, Very so good. why not? Let's I go, know, Fabian. Like, wow, that's like me and Frank Vetrano. You're Fabian Zetterland. What the heck yeah, are we yeah. doing? He sounds like he's on the European tour in golf, anyway. Zetterland <laughs> plus 250. No goal in the first minute game over three and a half. No, it's guy. I like that minus 750. You got. Hey, just give me four. Give me four, baby. Plus, plus seven that's to it. one. That, that's, that's, come on. Yeah, no, seven to one. I actually like it. I like your plays. I yeah. don't believe there'll be a goal in the first five. I think there will be more than three and a half. Zetterland, who knows? But you're right. The guy's underrated, and we're getting SJ Sharkey plus a goal and a half. Seven to one. I, you know what? I'm going to play your that's part awesome. of that. I, I got to. Yeah. They covered five straight by the puck line. Five straight games. Oh, yeah. 
So yeah, they've been good not. on the puck line. It makes sense to play that. Um, Cam, how do you feel about this, like, buy or, or all-star break week? Like, where hockey we, – we talked about, like, the Super Bowl – used to have a couple hockey games yeah. or at least like three or four that you could match up props with. And like this whole take a break for a week this week leading up to the All-Star game. I used to love the Campbell Conference versus the Wales Conference. Yeah. Seeing guys play with guys that they normally don't. I'll never forget when I saw Stefan Richet play with Mario Lemieux and I thought it was Amazing. one of the coolest things ever. And now they've taken away all of it. Like – I'm not even – I forgot there was a hockey game tonight until I saw Wetzel's same game parlay. Hockey yep. goes on the back burner, even All-Star break week for me. Is it the same for you? Yeah, it is. And the thing is, I find it harder to bet this stuff. In the old days, I knew, hey, I like the, I like the whales this year. Like, I like the players. Like Now, who knows? They're having – they're frigging put up a stick. You got a team. I remember I bet on the <laughs> Metropolitan. Me and Gabe were talking, just take the stupid team with the biggest odds and hope for the best. Like – I don't yep. like the format before it was cool. Nope. Remember like Gretzky would, uh, you know, do his thing and it was fun. And 11 to nine, yep. Dave Semenko would get a car afterwards for his work, protecting right. the great one and say, hey, <laughs> things, I hate to sound like the old guy. I'm not even that old, but I don't like the new stuff. I don't like, I don't like the way any of these leagues are being handled. Like, you know what I mean? They changed the pro bowl. It was fine before just bet the over. Uh, anyway, I'm a guy kind of like Marenzi, you know, you, when you go to the diner, you, you you know what's on the menu. Dave, it's when I go to do pars. I know I'm getting the chicken mashed potatoes and the gravy. You know what I mean? If I go for breakfast, I know what I'm getting. It's going to be perfect, yep. the same every time with repetition. And hockey never used to take this ty type of time off. It was the one sport that was pretty gritty. And, yeah, and, like, what's up with the schedule? Like, we were talking, Marenzi and I, last night. Like, the Canucks play Saturday night. They don't play till like, next week. Like, they're getting, like – major time off now that's very different than it used to be but yeah it's going to be a hard game to bet and i things have changed but hey these games are on the schedule now like why would there be like two ga two games tonight and then three tomorrow like why didn't you just play <laughs> everything tomorrow then take a break right like what right. what 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 logical Don't sense does that so you're telling me all these other teams are off and then you're oh, okay we're the team that's playing and then then the leafs played winnipeg and then they fly back to toronto and win like I just don't know what's happening anymore. I'm like, who's doing oh, the indeed. travel? Like, what, what's happening in this league? But anyway, I'm betting basketball tonight. I got Michigan against Michigan State. They're huge dogs. I'm going to lose. I think nice. I'm going to lose this St. Louis Billikens game. You guys got a score in that game. I took them live 11, plus 11 and a half. I think they're down like 16 against uh, Chicago. 62-46 oh, okay. Loyola with 945 left in the game. So that's 12, so, right, Dave? 62-46. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm losing yep. by the hook. That's fine. But I'm with Wetzel. I'm going to take the Sharks, sprinkle on the money line. I like the over five and a half if you can find it to juice. I know some places have six. I'll lay it. Uh, I think that we can. No goals in the first five, but I think the game will open up. San Jose scores goals at home. They won't be able to totally hold down Seattle. The first game's a train wreck. It's going under. So already put in some bets, Dave and, and Scott, for the Super Bowl. Had to click it early. You know, I like San Ooh. Francisco. I found on one of my books, Christian McCaffrey, MVP at five to one. I almost like blew my mind. I know wow. it's kind of a chalky wow. play. I've looked, I looked at three to one on every other book. Yeah, FanDuel Ontario is crazy. They got like, it's very interesting. They're, the favorites in hockey are juiced. The dogs are amazing. And they have great odds for like MVP props. The golf's pretty good too. Uh, so yeah, I was with them. And I, I think that thing's been knocked down. When I got it, it already went down to like almost like 380. So I see some spots, it's like plus 300. I just think if San Francisco yeah. wins, McCaffrey's going to have a big game. I worry a little bit about the neck. Guys, I, I, sound, I found George Kittle at 70 to 1. Like, I'm like, what? I know he did nothing last week, but I have a feeling George Kittle is going to respond in a major way. But then you could say they're going to give it to Purdy. But if Kittle gets multiple touchdowns, maybe they do give it to a tight end. I don't know. I think that price is too good to pass up. You know me, Dave. I'm a sucker. I'm just like that guy got the hook in my mouth so i see a number that good i gotta i gotta bite can we agree yeah. to to like a defensive player's not winning it every single year i advise people like mm -hmm. bosa's not winning it i mean unless it's a really a boring game or you know he scores a touchdown and all this other stuff one of the greatest plays ever in super bowl history was james harrison picking up that ball and going 99 yards against the cardinals there wasn't a lot of offense, but they still gave it to Roethlisberger there. The quarterbacks always – no defensive players. Like, just 
guys watching the show, the producers, and all this other stuff. It's fun to bet a defensive player like that at 70 to 1, 100 to 1. Doesn't win. Keep the ticket. You know what, I do like Bosa to get two sacks in the game, as crazy as that sounds. That's a pretty good price. I think okay. he will have a good game. So yeah. if I was going to take a defensive player, I wouldn't take anybody in the secondary. I, t- I would take like a guy like Bosa, like a rush end, somebody that right. can, you know, strip sack. Right. Maybe he pops Mahomes, he gets a fumble, somebody. It yeah. could happen, but you you guys know with Kansas City, if it's it's going to be Mahomes. But I looked at Kelsey, and his number was yeah. crazy too. It's like, yeah. are they are they roping us in here? It's basically telling us unless Kelsey gets yes. like four touchdowns, MB, Mahomes is getting the MVP if the Chiefs win. It's it seems like it's correlated Correct. to me. But uh, yeah, that's uh, I'm on the Niners this Super Bowl. Nothing's going to change my mind. I just think uh, the last two games they've survived. I think uh, guys, I equate it to the NCAA tournament. And I remember that year I had Virginia, and they just kept on. I thought they were going to lose. They win, they win, they win. They survived. They beat Texas Tech. It was a great day. And I just feel the 49ers are kind of like just this team that feels like a team of destiny. I know the Chiefs beat the Ravens, but let's talk about that. They they didn't score any points in the second half. The Ravens, Lamar's throwing into triple coverage, and Zay Flowers fumbles at the one. So you tell me things could have been a lot different for the Ravens. I know the 49ers haven't been playing great football, but I think think they're going to win. Dave uh, Wetzel, what do you guys think about that total? Gabe and I were talking early. Feels a little light at 47 and a half. Um, San Francisco's defense hasn't been great recently, but who? Like, I, I'm kind of leaning to the over. And if you, I guess if you like teasers, you get Kansas City even on a six on a six banger. You can get them at plus seven and a half. That makes sense. I think it's going to be. I can't just thing. bet. My problem, Cam, is uh, I'm going to get rid on the over under, but I, I can't with a straight face take Brock Purdy over maybe the greatest quarterback of all time. Well, I, I, I just, I, I, no, I can't. No, I get it, Wetzel. I get it. Like, yep. and the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. I'm insane. Buffalo. So, Ball yeah, yeah, I just keep, I, I just keep on coming back mm-hmm. for more. Like, mm-hmm. and know what the worst right. was? That Super Bowl. I was with my girlfriend. I remember the Super Bowl. I'm in the parking lot with Brian Blessing and Andy Isco, like crying when San Francisco blew that game. I had tons of money. My girlfriend's like, you don't look good. You don't look very good. I go, I got to go to the blackjack table. She's like, what? I go, I got to go to the blackjack table. She's like, what? Didn't you just lose your money? I go, don't worry about it, honey. I'll see you at the Sex in the City slots in about three hours, but I need to regroup at the felt. It was crazy. And then my girlfriend goes up to Andy Isco. Dave, it's the best move ever. She's like, shakes his hand. She goes, hey, Andy, nice to meet you. She goes, I've never felt softer hands. Like, you haven't worked a day in your life. I go, honey, uh, be nice to me. Because nice Andy's always poking jokes at me, right? He was, like, ripping yep, me and stuff. Yep. My girlfriend comes back and, like, wants, wants to put Andy Isco in a pretzel. I'm like, honey, relax. I, I can handle the job. She's like my bodyguard. I go, I don't need help. Andy's my friend. He, he, like, that's what we do. Guys bust, bust balls. This is what we do. But she wants so me. Funny. Andy, your hands are so soft. You've never worked a day in your – I love Andy Esco, by the way, Dave. That guy is Yeah, awesome. he's a great he's, dude. If you run into him, say hi. He's been around a long time. I remember oh, that name from, like, time. the 80s. Oh, dude, I used right? to do shows yes. with him and Brian Blessing and Chuck Esposito yeah. would come on. We'd do, like, yep. the round table and stuff. I had so many damn yep. good days. Gabe will tell you, too, where I ate, like, week-old wings at the Hooters. I, we could write a book <laughs> for some of the stories we have uh, in Vegas. Yeah, I was, I'm a real stooge. And I asked money earlier. Than I because uh, I didn't trust Do you have a Super Bowl cam? in your mind that you hit everything or like that went perfectly like if you think back and you go oh there was one super bowl i just nailed it all was the best i made like like everything new orleans beating indy but actually the biggest one i ever won with props and everything was new england's first win over the rams the first one they had when they were oh that was they won outright on the military kick those are my three best super bowls but i'll tell you a story about the saints uh Colt Super Bowl. I remember Morency. I had to buy those guys drinks. I was the only guy who bet on the Saints. Those guys were crying after that Super Bowl. It was crazy. I made like eleven thousand at the blackjack table too. It was best a big day of my one life. for the books. It was one of the best days big, of my life. Big game for the books. I love that day. <laughs> Have a good All one, right, guys. Sam George is the top of the hour. Game. Sam and Gabe. Keep it tuned where it is. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. 
go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Favorite. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby, the money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Chargers have the fifth pick in the National Football League draft. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different like roads that they could take uh, with this pick. And for the record as well, there's a few sports books out there already that already have next year's Super Bowl numbers up. The Chargers are like 30 to 1. So there's a lot of work to do. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. He feels like he's got unfinished business, right? He won the national championship, did what he said he wanted to do, going back to Ann Arbor. And, you know, he coached. I think with the Raiders as an assistant and then got the job with the Niners and then uh, went to title games, went to Super Bowls, uh, lost to his brother. And I think you're right. Unfinished business. Go back. Try to win a Super Bowl. Pharrell Coast to Coast. Only on Sports Grid. Purdue on the road in a very difficult place to win in Piscataway, New Jersey. Not in Jersey Mike's Arena, but in the rack. It, it was tight. We still have to win these games. Like, if we talk about even the equated to the NBA, like OKC just rolling into Detroit, going, like, yeah, this is going to be an easy victory, and not coming away with the W because you're not focused here. Good move there for the Purdue Boilermakers. You can take a look at Zach Eady. The early line, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game starts so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Having the foggiest idea why they're favored. Yeah. Um, I, I've heard a lot of that in the last 12 hours They're as well. They're getting credit uh, for that comeback <laughs> as if they were up by 40 uh, instead yeah. of coming back from 17 down. They got smoked, and they're favored over this guy. That kid's favored over this guy, the guy that's playing in his fourth Super Bowl. This is like putting me against Joe Montana in a Super Bowl. Who do you think people are going to bet on? Honestly, like, how in the F are they favored? Honestly, like, explain it to me. Tell me, tell me right now. I, why are they favored? Who hasn't pushed them around? Baltimore, Green Bay, and Detroit pushed them around. I know they won. Congratulations. You know what you're doing? Here it is. You're winning by the skin of your teeth. And guess what's going to happen on the 11th? They're going to knock your teeth out of your mouth. Ask Lamar Jackson. Ask Josh Allen what happens when you play the devil. You're going to take your soul and sleep with your wife. Wow. Ah, there you go. That's our guy, Scotty. I, listen, I agree with him. I mean, how in the world can they be fa – they're favorites to win the Super Bowl next year. They would have been yeah. favorites, Dave. You know, in, in the look-ahead line, they would have been favorites against the Baltimore Ravens who kicked their ass in San Francisco a month ago. That was an Vegas argument. Just, it's was, weird. They love was... San Fran, but no one wants to give Brock Purdy any credit. Which one is it? That's, that's the thing, right? Like, that argument was – was amongst people, Baltimore could have been favored by one or San Francisco could have been favored by one. There was no one that I talked to that thought Kansas City would be favored over uh, San Francisco. We're on the West Coast. I'm telling you now, a lot of it is geographical. 
You might get a book on the East Coast to go to pick. Four years ago, it flipped. Kansas City and San Francisco played. East Coast had Kansas City minus one or pick. Out West, it was all San Francisco always favored. When you know what the customer's going to bet, it's more reflective of what's going to happen in the game. People out here are going to come bet San Francisco more than they're going to bet the Chiefs. That's all it is. All right. We'll do it again tomorrow. Let's go yes. Colorado State and San Jose Sharks. San Jose Sharks. <laughs> Let's go.